Hi, my name is Chagai Ran, and I'll be presenting FlexDriver, a new way of implementing networking functionality for accelerators. This is a collaboration between NVIDIA Networking and Technion's Accelerated Computing Systems Lab. Accelerators require an efficient way of accessing the network. Why? A few examples are distributed accelerated computing, accelerator desegregation, and packet processing applications. With the end of the not scaling, developers turn to distributed computing to scale their applications and rely on acceleration to optimize the hardware for their specific tasks. In addition, as data center operators pool resources to improve utilization, they strive to use disaggregated accelerators. A somewhat similar requirement comes from the cloud infrastructure itself. Packet processing tasks for virtual network functions and software-defined networking infrastructure can benefit from acceleration. All these applications stress the need for efficient network access for accelerators. We can divide existing solutions into three categories, CPU-mediated designs, accelerator-hosted designs, and bumping the wire designs. Some designs rely on CPU mediation, having CPU software pass packets, messages, or even metadata between an accelerator and the NIC. While such a solution can depend on any existing offload in the NIC, it wastes precious CPU cycles on data transfers and can become a potential bottleneck. Alternatively, some designs place the entire network stack functionality within the accelerator. Research works on network attached FPGAs and FPGA NICs use this approach, as well as machine learning training accelerators from Google and Intel. Unfortunately, as the data center network becomes complex, accelerators need access to advanced network features. They need packet classification, they need tunneling support for virtual networking and traffic shaping for quality of service, they need RDMA or some other hardware transport layer implementation. Adding these features to the accelerator's embedded network stack wastes silicon area, which the accelerator could otherwise abuse, decreasing performance or increasing costs. Some accelerators partly rely on ASIC NICs, placing an accelerator, such as an FPGA, between the network and the NIC. This bump in the wire design was used in Microsoft's AccelNet paper, as well as the NVIDIA Innova 1 and Intel Pack. A bump in the wire design allows utilizing some of the ASIC NIC offloads. For example, one can use its virtualized DMA interfaces for SROB. However, many offloads still cannot be used as NICs only expose them through their PCIe interfaces. It would be difficult, for example, to have an accelerator packet encapsulated on the NIC with this configuration. The current solutions we've covered must give up one of these three goals. They either have high CPU utilization, high silicon area, or limited networking capabilities. Can we do better? We can. Our flex driver design adds a new point in this trade-off space trying to improve on all three parameters. The flex driver design uses direct peer-to-peer -peer PCIe interfaces to have an accelerator control an ASIC NIC and utilize its offloads. Accelerators embed a small flex driver module, which handles all communication with the NIC and abstracts it behind simple hardware interfaces. This allows the accelerator to rely on any offloads the NIC exposes, reducing the need area on the accelerator and without CPU involvement. In this talk, I will go over the flex driver design, focusing on memory constraints, and then show some micro benchmark evaluation, followed by a few example applications and the offload they can use. To provide some background, I will go over the software interface exposed by an NVIDIA ConnectX5 NIC, the NIC we've used in our system, but many NICs use similar interfaces. For transmitting, the driver and the NIC share a ring data structure, which is in host memory today with descriptors pointing to packet buffers to be sent. To send packets, the driver can take three descriptors at the ring's tail and point them to the desired buffers. The NIC reads the descriptors at the head, sends them, and then notifies the driver it completed the transmission. NICs use similar interfaces also for receive buffers and for completion notifications. For Plex driver, we need to decide where to place these rings and similar data structures. We could put them in host memory, having the FlexDriver module read and write them 
through its PCIe interface. However, this can increase the load on the CPU's PCIe link and limit the solution scalability. Another alternative is to place them on DRAM near the accelerator, though this can cause interference with accesses of the accelerator itself. We decided to place the data on the accelerator itself within the flex driver module. This eliminates interference with other components, but introduces a tight constraint on the amount of memory we can use. After all, on-chip memory is more expensive, and our goal was to save accelerator area. This challenge becomes more difficult considering the need for multiple rings. The size of each ring is set large enough to meet the desired throughput or message rate and to hide the expected latency, and multiple rings may be needed for RDMA or for performance isolation. For example, we analyzed the memory necessary for communication with an NVIDIA Connectix 5 MIP, assuming a 50 gigabit per second line rate with a varying number of transmit rings. You can find the detailed analysis in our paper. As the number of transmit rings grow, so does the memory, and it is much higher than the limit of the FPGA we have used for prototyping. With FlexDriver, we reduce the memory needed, as we will soon see. Our solution relies on the fact that FlexDriver is a hardware module and can intervene in memory accesses in a way a software driver cannot. When the NIC attempts to read any of the rings exposed by FlexDriver, the read request is handled by FlexDriver logic, so it doesn't have to map it directly to the internal memory and can instead translate between the memory format expected by the NIC and the internal representation on the fly. We use a more compact representation of the NIC data structures within FlexDriver. For example, we keep a shared descriptor pool sized to the overall bandwidth delay product improving scalability in the number of rings. We also know that the address range used for each descriptor is smaller, so we can store less than the 64 bits used by the NIC. Let's look at FlexDriver's transmit side block diagram to understand its translation better. When the accelerator sends a message for transmission, FlexDriver allocates a buffer in the buffer pool and a descriptor in the ring manager. Later, when the NIC attempts to read the transmission ring, its PCIe read request goes to an address translation mechanism, which uses hash tables to translate from the linear address space expected by the NIC to the internal pools. A proprietary interface block also converts the internal format to the desired proprietary format of the NIC. Similar translations occur when the NIC accesses packet data or writes completion notifications. The memory optimizations we use allow us to reduce the needed memory and scale much better with the number of rings. While the FlexDriver hardware module implements the data plane driver for the NIC, we still rely on software to handle the control plane. We designed a software stack that configures the NIC to operate with FlexDriver and two versions of its control plane. Our Ethernet control plane called FLDE can integrate with packet processing interfaces such as DPDK and the Linux DC of traffic control. For RDMA applications, our FLDR control plane integrates with Rocky and RDMACM. You can find more details about the software design in the paper. We've implemented FlexDriver on an NVIDIA Innova 2 SmartNIC, which combines the Connectix 5 NIC and the Xilinx Quintex Autoscale Plus FPGA on a single board. To understand the expected performance, we also developed a performance model that takes the overhead of using PCIe into account. We then tested our system with micro benchmarks and example applications. First, let's look at the area utilization of FlexDriver compared to published related work that uses Xilinx Autoscale family of FPGAs. The slide shows lookup table utilization, but the results are similar for other resources. FlexDriver's area is higher than that of a CPU-mediated design, as expected, but the CPU-mediated design provides lower throughput and requires additional CPU cores. Our area usage is close to Corandum, an FPGA softening. However, Corandum lacks some features that our NIC provides, such as X untunneling and RDMA. Strom and NICA do include a hardware implemented transport layer, and as a result, require more area than FlexDriver, which can use the NIC's offloads for similar functionality. We examine FlexDriver throughput with varying message sizes for benchmarks using Ethernet, shown on the left charts, 
and RDMA on the right. These graphs show local results where the sender and the receiver are both on the same host. Here we are limited by the PCIe interface to roughly 50 gigabits per second. Below, we send and receive traffic over the network with a 25 gigabits per second link. The results show that FlexDriver can operate the NIC efficiently for large packet sizes, reaching the bottlenecks of the NIC and the PCIe link. For smaller packets, there is some gap. The Connectix 5 NIC interface includes some additional optimizations for smaller messages that we haven't implemented for FlexDriver yet, and we believe they would improve the results. In terms of latency, FlexDriver is 17% slower than the CPU on average, likely due to the lower clock rate the FPGA uses. However, the CPU suffers from two and a half times higher 99.9% latency due to OS noise. To compare against the direct attached FPGA, we show published numbers from the EMU paper. EMU's latency is 1.7 microseconds lower than FlexDriver's as the FPGA can respond directly to the network without traversing the NIC and the PCIe links as in FlexDriver. We believe FlexDriver's increased latency will still be worth it for many applications for the provided network features. To demonstrate what features can be used, we developed a disaggregated accelerator that uses RDNA for communication and two packet processing accelerators that rely on various NIC offloads. Our disaggregated accelerator implements an offload for the Zook algorithm, a cipher commonly used on mobile networks, and disaggregate it, having clients access the accelerator remotely. We rely on the Nix RDMA implementation to expose the accelerator as an RDMA service. Here we see the results when operated from a single core. Naturally, the throughput of the accelerator is higher than that of a single CPU core, but it also nearly reaches the expected bandwidth according to our performance model. As an Ethernet packet processing application, we developed an IP defragmentation offload. This offload merges IP fragments into larger datagrams. Many NIC offloads do not work with IP fragments, as they miss critical information. For example, receive site scaling relies on having the TCP headers within each packet to classify packets to flows and steer them to the right core. We evaluate this offload by sending traffic from a virtual machine through a VXLAN tunnel, which we configured with a large packet size, resulting in fragmentation. The receiver NIC first decapsulates the packet with its tunneling offload and then passes them to the IP defragmentation accelerator with FlexDriver. Then FlexDriver sends the resulting datagrams back to the NIC, where RSS can operate successfully. As you can see, Software defragmentation helps the throughput significantly, as without RSS, all traffic passes through a single CPU core. Hardware defragmentation reaches nearly the original bandwidth. This tunneling results are slightly lower, as the sender that does the encapsulation in software must become the bottleneck. But IP defragmentation still increases performance by five times. Finally, we used another inline processing application to demonstrate the use of packet classification and traffic shaping. This IoT authentication accelerator validates a cryptographic signature on incoming messages and drops invalid ones to protect the host. While it can operate at 25 gigabits per second time rate, we artificially limit it to 12 gigabits per second for this experiment and send two competing flows so that flow B receives twice as much traffic as flow A. Without traffic shaping, flow B also utilizes twice as much of the accelerator throughput. Using the NIC's packet classification and rate limiting abilities, we can limit flow B so that flow A can also get its fair share of the accelerator. To conclude, we've seen how FlexDriver provides accelerators with efficient direct network access, reusing existing NIC features, and reducing area utilization within the accelerator. Thank you for listening. And feel free to contact me with questions and comments.